In just a few minutes, we'll fix a bad night sky photo and take another one from good to great. The wonders of the universe. What the heck? How am I going to fix that? Suppose you spent half an hour on a photo and you wonder if there's room for improvement. Or maybe there was an issue while you were taking the photo. Clouds might have come in partway through the night. Someone might have shined a light near the telescope. The telescope might have started photographing a tree or a house as it moved across the sky. Not that that's ever happened to me. Or maybe something else showed up in the image that is affecting the final image. But how do we fix a photo after we take it? The Sea Star takes a series of photos 10 seconds long and then it combines them stacks them into the final image. If some of the images are bad, it can mess up the final result. Plus, you have no control over how it combines the images. The C-Star software, although it's quite good, does make some choices that you might want to override. Now, by default, the C-Star does not save the individual exposures. You need to turn that on in the app before you start a session. Now, what are we going to use to make things better? We're going to be using some free software, Cyril, along with another program, StarNet++, to reprocess some of the images. Cyril runs on Mac, Windows, and even Linux. I'm not going to go over downloading and installing those today. Telescopes and cameras can have problems. There are photos called calibration frames that can fix some of the problems. You'll see terms like flat frames, bias, or dark frames. They correct for various problems in the telescope, including the sensor and the optics. But we're not going to use any of these today. The Sea Star only takes light frames, and so that's what we're going to be using. I'll show examples of calibration frames in future videos. So in our second example, we're going to try to salvage a bad session. First step we're going to do is start up Cyril. Here you can see it, I started it, and um, the first thing we want to do is change the working directory. You click on this little home icon, and you get a, uh, a directory, and you pick open. And you can double check that you're in the right place by looking up at the title bar. If we look inside of that directory, you can see instead of the lights directory, I put, just put all of our, the frames in a directory called frames. I don't need to name it a specific way because we are going to be manually processing it. But don't worry, it doesn't take very long. First, we want to convert all of our files. So you notice we're on this conversion tab here on the right hand side of Cyril. So we're going to add the files, go into frames, and we're going to pick all of them and then click add. And notice we now have all of our frames. Next, we're just, we have to give it a name, so we're just going to call it Lights. And we want to click on Debayer and, and Convert. Each of these steps we're going to perform are done automatically by the scripts. So each individual step will take less time. This one only took seven seconds. Notice there's a calibration tab, but since we don't have any bias, dark, or flat frames, we won't be using that. We'll go right to registration. We want to make sure we're using global star alignment, and we click Go Register. On the left side, you can see the stars that it's using for alignment. You can see the progress along the bottom, and it says Registration Complete. Now we can look at a plot of all of the frames and how well they aligned. We go down to the lower right, and we can exclude certain frames from the stack. But first, we want to switch to auto stretch mode. So I'm just using the arrow key to go through the individual exposures, and you'll see how they shift around. If I want to exclude a specific frame, I hit the space bar, and you'll see an example of that shortly. Here, a satellite crossed the frame. We're going to exclude that. Notice the telescope started tracking the stars and started getting some of a, the roof in the frame. So let's go back up and let's start excluding the frames with the roof. 
these are part of the reason why the final result looked, the default final result looked so bad. And notice, this is from a different imaging session. So we will keep going. Oop, satellite, satellite. And we're at the end. We've gone through all 324 frames, and so we can close this. Now we can have Cyril do the stacking. Again, you can see the progress at the bottom. The nice thing about doing this manually is you can exclude bad frames. And notice we have the final result very similar to what we got with the scripts. Let's look at the histogram and we have a nebula. There are lots of artifacts along the edge here, these kind of things. So we're going to, again, we do the crop first. Right click, crop. Next, we do the background extraction. This time we're also going to do it, let it do it manually. We're not even mapping out some of the points. Let's switch back to linear mode before we apply this. And you can see we have some nebulosity, so let's apply. As before, we, next, we now do the photometric color calibration. This is NGC 281. And there's the photometric color calibration. And click close. As before, I want to save this, so let me click save. We have to extract the stars for the best results. Pre-stretch and execute. I always find these photos kind of surreal since there are no stars. So for this image, let's actually try using the generalized hyperbolic stretch. But first, I'm going to switch back to linear mode. So first I stretched back to linear mode. So the generalized hyperbolic stretch, it's relatively easy, but we're not going to get too deep into it. I'll show you kind of the workflow I've been using recently. First, for the first pass, we increase local stretch, and then we start stretching it. Now one thing I like doing is clicking to logarithmic scale, and for this initial stretch, we're going to increase the magnification. And you can see that all the data was kind of all the way jammed to the left. As we bring this up, we can start seeing nebulosity. We don't want to go too far with this initial one. I think that's about right. And let's click, click Apply. You notice the background is not black, so let's fix that. Go to Linear Stretch, and let's shift the black point. But first, we click on this to go back to a non a non-magnified view. Now one thing you want to be keeping an eye on is this clip number. You don't want to clip when you clip you get you lose data. So notice the background's getting darker and the histogram's getting closer to the left side and notice when it hits that clip goes up. So let's keep move it back to just zero. Don't worry it kind of made it dark We'll fix that in a moment. Click Apply, and then go back to Generalized Hyperbolic. So now it's just a it's it's just a matter of going through a variety of steps. We want to go ahead and stretch this more, increase the contrast. That's too far. One thing with is you want to try to have this these lines be more 
at a flat line. It's difficult, it takes time, but so we're not going to spend too much time on it. Click apply. Apply. There are other stretch methods here. You can do modified arc sign, inverse arc sign, inverse generalized hyperbolic. You can also do different color stretching. We're not going to do any of that this time, but I'm just mentioning it to make you aware. So one thing when you're stretching, you want to, on the subsequent stretches, you want to vary your symmetry point. Again, I'm not going to get into that. I'll probably get into it in a future video. In the meantime, there's other videos out there with more details. So we're going to just click on this point and this, notice this changed the symmetry point. So now if we increase the stretch, if you increase the stretch, notice as we vary the symmetry point, what it's doing to the curves. If you don't like what happened, if you haven't hit apply, you can hit reset. Another way to focus on the image is you can click and drag an area and make that your symmetry point. So now we can stretch that part. So you notice it made the mid-tones brighter, which is part of what we wanted. And when you do this to a subject like the Orion Nebula, you can focus on bringing out the mid-tone, the mid-brightness points and leave the bright parts and not push the bright parts as much so you can get more detail in that trapezium area. I think this is fine for now. Let me apply. I'm just going to play around with this a little bit. You notice the line is kind of is now kind of getting more linear although the red definitely isn't i'm not going to try to fix that in this video but i'm just going to leave it at that for now hit close then we go we have noticed we're in linear mode and it is stretched we can go change the color saturation this already looks pretty saturated yeah i think we don't need to we don't need to, if anything, we might want to decrease the, sat the saturation. So now, make sure that this is saved. And let's go ahead and recombine. So we want to, we want to get starless and, st and stacked. Notice in this tool, it has a histogram and stretch it has a simplified version of the generalized hyperbolic stretch on the left side we're not going to do anything with that right now but i just thought i'd point that out let's bring back the stars see too many stars let's dial it back that will do for now i'm not sure that i'm super pleased with the state of the nebula i think i kind of didn't push the the dark parts of the nebula enough, but we're just going to go with that. And again, save. And done. Here's what it looks like after being run through the denoise. As you can see, it's a vast improvement over the original. Finally, here's a bonus example. I had taken almost a thousand images of the Galaxy M33 over the course of seven weeks and seven sessions, and I forgot about them. But once I processed them, I got this. You don't want to do that. If you like this video, watch this live stream where I quickly process some photos with Cyril. See you there. Before I get eaten alive by mosquitoes, I'm going to stop this.